Hi, how you doing? I thought I'd do a, a Mind Mastery follow-up video for you. I have gotten into the habit of sending out an email after each Mind Mastery, um, but I really thought that maybe you might enjoy having a video to watch. You can watch it on your phone and listen to it when you're driving and whenever you need a reminder or a little bit of a pick-me-up. So, um, thank you so much for being a part of this. and. Um, as you know, we're, we're growing the Mind Masteries very organically because honestly, I, I don't have time to, um, to be promoting them. I just have a whole bunch of other really big projects going on. And I thought rather than have that pull my attention to the Mind Mastery, I would just focus on the big projects and then, um, you know, individuals or teams from the companies of the projects I'm working on will put them into the Mind Mastery. So please invite your friends and your colleagues. I would really like to build this up and have it be, you know, 50 people or 75 people or 100 people and just, um, and really, you know, keep building it and create this magnificent community of like-minded, conscious people. And that's you. So I'd love to have your friends and colleagues and business partners and family and lovers um, and enemies <laughs> join us. All right, let's go through a, um, a f uh, like a sort of a redo on the 15th, kind of a recap. And um, so starting from the top, there's the four keys. So the first key is that our heart is our portal. Now, for years, I mean, this is just, you know, we're constantly evolving, right? So for years, most of us in the self-development slash spiritual community have focused on using our crown chakra as a way of opening up communication between our unconscious and our superconscious, which is our connection to the divine. I call it God, you can call it whatever you want. And um, it works, it works very, very well. Well, one of the things we've discovered as we've all been kind of going down this path is that the heart, actually when you open the heart chakra, it works equally as effectively as the crown chakra in terms of connecting into the divine to spirit, to God, um, to the universe, or now we'd like to call it the multiverse. So the concept of there just being a universe, as in one, is a limitation. So uh, that's something new I'm gonna be introducing um, in June. And so when we go to our heart chakra, all you have to do is visualize it opening. So all you have to do, you just close your eyes and just visualize your heart chakra opening. And when it does, it creates this vertical um, integration all the way up into your crown and beyond and all the way down through your entire body, connecting and integrating and charging up all of your chakras. So I do encourage you to continue to do the liquid gold um, meditation, bringing in liquid gold through your crown chakra. It's really useful for um, recharging your brain syndicate, which is your hippocampus, your pituitary, and your pineal glands. Yeah, and, um, and also take a minute to just open, visualize your heart chakra opening like a flower and that whole integration taking place. And so that's a really powerful tool. Now, the step, next step in that is that bliss really is our, is our um, actually emotion is our guide. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So emotion is our guide. If you're feeling badly, it's, um, a sign that there's something you need to shift. So I think that getting into this lifestyle of living your life on purpose and truly being wide awake means that when uh, negative emotions like fear, anger, sadness, grief, resentment, 
um, when those types of emotions come up, then that's a way of your guidance, your inner guidance system saying to you, hey, you need to kind of step back for a second and recalibrate things here because there's something that's not working. And it might simply be your self-talk. It might be the food you consume. It might be the lack of exercise. It might be a relationship. It might be um, some past programming from your childhood. So getting conscious of that, being aware of that, and then giving yourself permission to step back for a few minutes and recalibrate and put yourself back on purpose is really, really powerful. So emotions are our guide. Now, what do you want to calibrate that to? Well, um, if you were in April's Mind Mastery, you remember I went through the description of what um, choice point is and what the emotions are below choice point and what the emotions are above choice point. And um, if you don't recall how that information, then I would re highly recommend you get the Esther and Jerry Hicks book, um, Ask and It Is Given. It's about halfway through the book that that emotional balance scale is laid out for you. And by the way, that's a really good NLP book. It's an NLP book in its analog form. Um, and I teach it both ways. When you're in the NLP training with me, and there's one coming July 9th uh, to 19th, so you're welcome to jump on board. Um, as you're going through the NLP training, I teach it to you both digitally, which was the swish pattern I taught you on Friday, and also analog, which is being able to see how things flow both horizontally and vertically. So um, emotions are our guide. Bliss is our compass. So what that means is that um, if you're not in bliss, you're off. It's really simple. It's, it's kind of like running the Olympic race. You know, you're either first place or you're not. And so you're either in bliss or you're not. Now, if you're not in bliss, you're in fear because all emotions are some derivative of fear. And fear is a, um, is a product of a limiting belief. And limiting beliefs are always a result of a limiting decision. So you'll want to um, um, deduce it back to find out re or reverse engineer it to find out what's the limiting decision because somewhere in there there's a limiting decision or you wouldn't be feeling bad and I know there was a few of you in the room that were um, experiencing some really big shifts emotionally and those are all all of that um, withhold or drag on your inability to get to a place of happiness joy knowledge, bliss, means there's some limiting decisions that need to be cleared out. And the best way to blow those out is just come to the practitioner training and I'll give you the tools for that and then you can use them all the time. Okay, so once we get through and, and you've got that calibration point as to, okay, I'm not, I'm here in resentment or I'm here in frustration or I'm here in sadness, the, 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 what you need to do then is just, uh, what, what's, the, uh, what's the antithesis of that would be bliss. So how do I get to bliss? Well, you could run a swish pattern and you could um, blow out the, uh, the limiting decision. Or at least some of the peripheral layers to the limiting decision. Because we actually don't use the swish pattern for limiting decisions. But it's a good way to sort of uncover what that is. Okay? So that's the four keys. Um, I gave you some homework. Now let me say this to that, and I've been really thinking this through since I gave that to you. I gave you some very advanced homework, okay? And I want you to just really appreciate something about this. And that is, I normally don't give that homework, uh, that advanced of homework to Mind Mastery students. 
And the reason I don't is because you're just beginning, you know, you're just beginning down this path of coming to um, acceptance that, you know, you really are the one in charge of your experiences. If you recall the letter we wrote to God, and then we went back and we, wherever we had God, we put our own name. And it's like, wow, that's a reality check. So at a mind mastery level, um, I typically don't even reveal the master key. In fact, at the practitioner level, I often don't reveal the master key. It depends on where my students are at in their consciousness. And it's a decision that I make as a trainer, as a master trainer, in the moment, reading my audience, okay? So, however, the cat's out of the bag, so to speak, and I did give you the manuscript. Now, I'll tell you why I don't give it, okay, at this level. The reason I don't give it at this level is um, because most people don't do it. And um, I just really feel that to give a, a high-level tool to someone or a group of people that aren't ready to, you know, go for it is kind of pointless. Um, but however, you have it because I was like guided to give it to you. I was inspired to give it to you. And so it's Monday and um, I'm just curious if you've actually downloaded it and printed it and started on it. Because if you haven't, um, that says something. Now what'll happen is, and I can probably hear some of you go, yeah, but I have my family and I'm, you know, it was the weekend and I had to like clean my house and then there was like my kids and you know, I had to like spend some time catching up on some work because I was out on Friday. And you see, that's why I don't give out this tool. Because people that are really mm, ready for this kind of tool would be like, hell yeah, I'll stay up and do it. Like, I don't care what's on my plate. I don't care what I said I had going on. Maybe I'll even just like move something off my calendar to make it happen. Because at the end of the day, what it really boils down to is, what do you really want? You know, what do you really want? Do you really want to be free? Do you really want to be conscious? Do you really want to live your life on purpose? Do you really want to be wide awake? And if you don't, that's fine. Most people don't. So it's fine. It's not a judgment issue. It's just that it's, um, and I say this with all due respect, it's just a matter of really just honoring where you're at, you know? And if you really don't want to be wide awake and if you really don't want to be free and if you really don't want to be in charge of your life yet, it's fine. However, you all did commit to um, getting on top of that thing and taking action. So um, if you haven't, do it, do it now, because it's Monday, and what a better time to start. I am so looking forward to seeing you in June. Remember, it's June 12th, so block out your calendar, and um, let's bring some new folks. You know, for all of you in the room, if you brought in one new person, we would double in size, and then that would be really fun. Then we could really uh, just kind of ramp up, and we could do some more social stuff. By the way, thank you for all of you that hung back and... Um, Friday evening we got together and just had a couple cocktails and some food and some good laughs. I love you guys. It was so good. And um, we're such great singers. So it was just a blessing to be able to do that with you. Let's do that every time we have a mind mastery. Let's hang back and just kick back and just hang out with each other and, and uh, bond a little more. All right. Have a wonderful week. If you need some help, give me a holler. And... Um, I really look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.